All right, so this is unexpected. Uh, for those who are watching on the, uh, the the Twitch stream, you can see I was dressed for a different sporting occasion this evening, uh, getting ready for the Raiders game against the Jaguars of Jacksonville. Uh, but that was a stupid preseason game and sucked. So uh, we are rocking and rolling with this today. I believe we are going right now. Oh, there we go. Okay. Uh, my time just wasn't counting at all, which was terrifying. So, um, the Calgary Flames have signed Jonathan Huberto to a gigantic extension. Um, the terms of the deal are the exact same as they would have been if his name would have been Jonathan Goudreau. As he signs an eight-year deal worth $10.5 million, it is the longest deal in Calgary Flames history, it is the most expensive deal in Calgary Flames history, and I would argue one of the most important deals in Calgary Flames history. Uh, this is a Flames team that obviously, over the last little bit, has gone through some shit because of that guy on the screen right now. Johnny Gattro. <laughs> um, so the, the Flames needed to get this done. The Flames needed this move. Um, I'm seeing some people online saying, oh, overpay, overpay. And look, in the grand scheme of things, maybe. That's not what today is about from a Flames fan perspective. Today is about getting a win from a Flames fan perspective. There, it, it appeared to be at least one on the horizon as the Flames made this deal some fucking crazy how to get Jonathan Huberto and Uyghur and Schwint and uh, a first round pick from the Florida Panthers for a dude who didn't want to be here anymore. And at the time, you're making that deal and everyone is saying, Okay, well, if they can sign if they can sign Huberto, then this deal becomes an absolute win. Well, deal signed, uh, so automatic, like gigantic, huge, huge, huge win for the Calgary Flames. Um, I think the world of, world of Huberto. I, I think he has elite sense, uh, awareness. He's also pretty fucking good at the sport of hockey. Um, like, just he checks off so many boxes for you, that, that there is no way you can look at this as anything but a gigantic win. Again, is it a lot of money? Uh-huh. Is Huberto one of the most underrated players in the National Hockey League? Probably. Um, I, I just... I think this is great for the Flames, and I think anyone who wanted to be on board with giving Johnny Gaudreau this kind of money should be on board with giving Jonathan Huberto this kind of money. We all know, if you listen to my podcast, Coach Potato Diary, um, we all know that maybe I wasn't as big on giving Gaudreau this type of money, and if I had my druthers, would it be a touch less expensive? Of course it would be, but you could say that about literally every other contract. It signed in the National Hockey League. There are very few where you're like, oh yeah, that is the exact perfect dollar amount. Every time you're going to want it to get a, a little bit cheaper. You should see me on Out of the Park Baseball um, trying to get every last dollar on um, on different either contracts or trades or anything. I, I'm a little cheap when it comes to sports, but overall, this is a gigantic, gigantic move for the Calgary Flames. You now know you are set up long term. You now know that this isn't going to be a, okay, well, let's see what happens this year. And if things go bad, we'll trade Huberto and we'll, um, we'll, we'll trade Uyghur and we'll go on from there. Now you know that Huberto is a part of your core. He is a part of what you are building around and he is a part of the future of the Calgary Flames. He is signed, as Ryan Pike said on, on Twitter, he is signed through the year 2031, which sounds entirely made up. Um, I just, I, I can't, I can't express how big of a win I think this is for the Flames. You now know, salary cap wise, what you are spending years in the future, especially on this guy. As soon as next year, you have two fairly big contracts that come off of your books in Monaghan and in Lucic. Um, and so you can, it, it's not like this is, I think, severely handicapping you in any way in terms of uh, salary cap management or anything like that. I think this is, I just, I keep saying it. This is a gigantic win for the Calgary Flames. This is, this is the type of move that Brad Living needed to do. This is the type of move that the this fan base, as we're seeing tonight on social media, needed desperately. That this is the type of win that you can now build on with the Flames. And it also kind of helps you set up this identity, right? Like, we know that this is a Calgary Flames team that is coached by Daryl Sutter. Um, so you're going to have a bit of an identity now, but now, like, you, you know the types of players that you're going to want to bring in. Not that there are a thousand Jonathan Huberdos out there, but you, you now know the type of team that you can kind 
kind of shift things around with Manjapani being locked in for a few more years, uh, now with Huberto being locked in for a little bit. You, you now know kind of what your team is going to look at and what your team is going to look for uh, when it comes to free agency, the rest of this year, in trades now. It, it just, it really helps solidify things instead of what was looking to be a bit of a weird, at least first half of the season for the Flames. If Huberto wasn't under contract, if Uyghur wasn't under contract, you didn't really know what direction you were going in. Um, Team Tank is not on board with this one tonight, that's for sure, but... Again, I, I just, I keep saying it. This is such a big day for the Flames organization to be able to, to get this done. In terms of what is next now for the Flames, obviously it would be great to get a Nazem Kadri deal signed. Um, I think you'd feel a whole lot better about things going into next year if you could um, find a way to bring him in. But even as this team sits right now, I think you have to feel very comfortable with where they are at. And again, with what you are building from a Flames organization standpoint. Uh, so now, even if, honestly, like looking at this trade, and I know I'm kind of rambling, but that's what emergency Twitch streams are all about. Um, I just, my entire train of thought just derailed there. You just watched CTE play out live in front of you. Uh, <laughs> but if you're looking at this trade, that's where we were at. Uh, if you're looking at this trade from a, a Flames perspective now, if Uyghur leave, Uyghur could come in on opening night, burn the Calgary Flames jersey literally off his body, revealing an Edmonton Oilers jersey in a pro wrestling style storyline, and I would still consider this trade a win now for the Flames. <laughs> like, if you got um, Huberto on a long-term deal and a first-round pick, for Matthew Kachuk, I would say, you know what? That's a hell of a trade that Bachelor Living just put off. To now at least get half of a year out of Uyghur, plus whatever this Schwint prospect is going to turn into, and a first round pick, two years from now, on a team that, I mean, we just saw, did well in the regular season, had a bit of a playoff issue, who knows where they're going to be in a couple of years now. It, 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 I, I can't, again, it all comes back to, what a deal. And that trade, uh, I think, works out perfect now from a, a Flames perspective. In the last few days, Brad Trilliving, Brad Trilliving must have had some kind of um, either, like, cottage reservation, a plane to catch, or something. He's like, hey, I got to get this shit done by August 6th because we got, we got some stuff going on. I got a cottage. It's already stocked up with a bunch of Bobby Margaritas. We, we, we got a... We got to get this shit done. And so he's been taking care of business. And you're right, um, Deeds. And by the way, hi, Deeds. I've missed you. Um, but you're right, Deeds. Like, Schwint is a, a solid prospect. And I, exactly where he fits in from a Flames perspective, uh, I don't know. Um, but he at least is going to have, I think, an opportunity with this team to kind of blossom with the Calgary Flames. Because I still think that there's a lot open on this team's bottom six while we are talking today. I'm throwing shit around now. Um, while we're talking today about this being a big win for the team, this is still, I, I would suggest, um, a relatively incomplete team. Um, I, I don't love the, the bottom six that much. I don't love that um is still on this team. Um, I I talked about this with Audie um, on the, the Couch Potato Diary that I did oh, um, on the, the Couch Potato Diary that I did at the end of the season. I would love for some of the young guys from Stockton or now the Wranglers um, to get called up and to have an opportunity to kind of liven up the bottom six, especially that fourth line. It was a disaster last year until Ruzicka got called up. And seeing all of the, the models and everything and all the projections, having Rooney on there already, just kind of gives me a eh. And Lewis is on there already. And it's just a eh. I would like to see guys like Schwint, um, guys like Ruzicka, guys like Pelche, um get an opportunity now to blossom at the National Hockey League level. And I think that is where, when you're looking at how is this team going to get better in life after Johnny Gaudreau, if in life after a five-game series loss at the hands of the Edmonton Oilers, where is the improvement coming from? Or how do we even get back to that point? I don't think it's with Tyler Lewis. I, I think we've kind of seen, I think we're bumping up on that ceiling a little bit. Um, if someone clipped that, that's a weird hand motion that I'm making, but you're getting my point here. Um, I think the way that there is improvement and the way there is development and the way there's progress with this team is now if you have some of these young players getting this opportunity. Like, 
I, I think the top line is going to be Huberto, Lindholm, and Toffoli. Um, if you wanted to fit Manchapani in there somewhere, uh, you're not going to get an argument from me. But if you wanted to fit, like, a, a Zari or a Pelche or someone like that on there, kind of like with uh, not, not similar players, and please, in no way, uh, consider this a comparison of uh, one to the other in anything other than situational. But if you wanted to use Pelche as your answer to the Sedin twins of your um, Huberto and Lindholm, I wouldn't hate that. And just kind of spread out, then Toffoli gets to move along down the line, and, and Bullman and all these other guys. Um, ooh, damn. Um, I wouldn't mind that. Like, I just think, I think Huberto was good enough that he is going to elevate whoever he is with. And while after the playoffs last year, it seems pretty clear that Tyler Toffoli may need a little bit of elevating. Uh, sorry, Robert, uh, <laughs> from SDPN. Um, but I, I think if you wanted to put a young kid on that line and kind of spread out the love a little bit more, I, I don't hate that idea either. So I, I think the, the talents and the playmaking ability of a Jonathan Huberto allows you to get a little bit more creative um, and also give guys like a, a Schwint uh, a chance because like you said uh, Deeds that there is some untapped potential there and maybe he turns into nothing like that's um, you, you can make a lot of money and sound really really smart by predicting that every prospect in hockey ever is going to fail because the odds are you're going to be right you know like the, now some of them will make you make it look like you failed spectacularly because they're going to turn out but if you just went through the draft each year and went that kid sucks that kid sucks that kid sucks that kid sucks every prospect ranking yeah that kid sucks that kid sucks that kid sucks you're going to be right um so that like there, there is a very real chance that schwint scores as many goals with the calgary flames as i do but there's also a very real chance that he turns into a thing and i, I think the way this flames team is set up now they have an opportunity to to maximize a lot of those things shall we say <laughs> yes Edmonton yeah that, that's a very good but Edmonton fans have reason to believe that though um you could say so Edmonton fans you could also say so Edmonton drafts because that's kind of how it's played out with a few exceptions of course over the last uh little while I recently they've been all right I'm thinking an era before but uh look at that just an absolute drive by the Edmonton Oilers for no good goddamn reason other than it's fun to do uh, the, the hockey season truly never ends. <laughs> but yeah, um, as Deeds is doing, if you guys have anything you want to drop in the chat, by all means, uh, I am I am here to entertain, at least, or give somewhat thoughtful things while I take on the uh, Winnipeg Jets in this all-time franchise um, that, uh, that I have going here with the Calgary Flames. You see this all the time, and then got, I got one of those pesky things called a job, and so those have fallen off touch, but... Um, yeah, this has been a lot of fun, just chatting with you guys again. <laughs> Brad, you're living the Boston Beats of GM. I like that call a lot, yeah. You're right, yes. There's all reason to, to chirp Edmonton fans, and it is that they are Edmonton fans. You, you are correct. We may have to tone that down a little bit after, you know, the last one. Although, like, I chirped them the second they lost in the playoffs, so who, who am I to say anything about chirping the, the Oilers of Edmonton? Um... That was a solid one from uh, from Big John there. Brad for living the Boston Pizza of GMs. That's good. Get it? Because his dad owns uh, Boston Pizza. Huh? Huh? Or ran one or whatever the fuck. I don't know. He's involved. Trying to think. What else? Like, I'm very focused on everything right now. The problem for the Flames on Kadri. Not to... Uh... uh not to, to say anything naked on a very upbeat podcast so far. The, the issue with the Kadri thing is that, as of right now, the Flames can't afford Kadri unless he wants to take a bit of a discount. And if he wants to take a bit of a discount, there's probably another team that starts with the C that he, he would want to go to. Um, instead of uh, in, instead of Calgary. Just a, a thought there. But um, I, I think he would be... Oh, he, he would just... Lou talks about it all the time, or at least he used to, um, on 960, talking about slugging. If, if you could get, if you could go into next year with Backlund as your number three center instead of your number two, oh god, I would feel so much better about it. If, if not, if fine, whatever we have seen, Michael Backlund can be a, a very reliable number two, and if that second line is 
uh, this guy here, Manjapani, um, along with Coleman and Backlund, then you feel very comfortable about what you have on your second line there. But um, if you could get Kadri as a number two, Backlund down to number three, and then whoever at four, I know I've left Monaghan out. I'm thinking, I suppose. Um, that's kind of how I would see things stacking up right now. Seen some people... Uh, hi, Dylan, by the way. Thank you very much for the, uh, the subscription. Um, seen some people saying that it will look bad uh, in the last few years. Definitely possible, maybe likely. Uh, but either way... <laughs> I'm just going to go for a lap here. Uh, either way, a huge star sign, a long-term deal with the Flames, so I count that as a win. Yeah, there are times where... Like, you need to... What we just saw. The, the Flames tried to overpay twice for guys, and it didn't work. So we've seen now that at least for the next little bit, there needs to be a Calgary tax on something. So they paid it. You know, Huberto was coming from a place where he had no state tax, coming to a place where there's a bunch of taxes. It's not called state tax because we're not living in a state, but you get the drift. He is he is being taxed significantly more than he was used to. And so you, you are going to have to... I think accommodate his lifestyle accordingly. So I, I think there is a bit of that there. Also, I don't know if, if I don't know if this is going to, to age as poorly as some people think. Because the thing with Huberto, like there obviously has to be some physical talent there. Um, it, this is the National Hockey League, but the, I, I think the best thing about Huberto is how smart he is and how aware he is. And guys don't get dumber as they age in the National Hockey League. Like I mean, hockey sense wise, I'm sure some guys just inherently stupider. But like that that hockey sense going away with age and so is he going to be a 10 million dollar player for the exact length of this contract probably not but he's at least going to be i think extremely valuable to this team even toward the end of the the contract because he is such a good playmaker he is such a smart hockey player he sees the ice so well. going to go away will he lose a step yes. will his I again not to not not to, to speak ill of the, the departed of Calgary. I feel much more comfortable. Oof. I feel much more comfortable giving eight years to Jonathan Huberto than I did to John than I do to Johnny Gaudreau. I think and again could end up being wrong on this one. We'll see. Clip this and, and play it back to me in eight years. Um but I think the things that Johnny Gaudreau does well, it is the speed that he can play with. Um, it, it is his hand-eye coordination. Those things go away a little bit. I'm not saying he's going to be me. I'm just saying, like, th those are the things that can start to decline with age. The things that Huberto does well, those are the things that are going to hang around a little bit longer into the contract. So, well, th th there, of course, is going to be decline, and a $10.5 million player is a, a, a lot to, to spend on a hockey player in this, the year of our hockey gods, 2022. But... I just I don't I don't think this player ages as poorly as some others do. Like look at on, honestly like not the same defensively by any stretch, but look at Jonathan Taves. Now, he is not a 10 million dollar player, but I think he is a useful player for the the Chicago Blackhawks. And if the Blackhawks were still good, Taves I think would be seen as a valuable piece of that. So, I, I think there's a bit of a comparison there. Again, not straight line and it's not perfect, but just some thoughts there. I Again, I don't think Huberto ages out of this contract as badly as some people think. We also have to think, and I know I am I am taking everything that people were saying to me about the Johnny Gaudreau contract when I was like, eh, I don't know if I would sign that. And, and I am now spinning it around to justify this one. And I, I appreciate that you are all watching the Twitch stream of a hypocrite, but I, you look at, like, you're assuming the salary cap is going to go up in the next little while. Now, that is a dangerous assumption because we just saw a global pandemic come out of nowhere and shut things down for a couple of years. So, we know that is at least in the realm of possibilities to happen. Um, but you look at, there's a new TV deal now. You have teams making revenue again because the hockey is back in arenas with humans who pay money to be in those arenas, except for in Arizona. And that helps you make more money. More Bringing in more money means the salary cap goes up, yada, yada, yada. So, I also there's going to be, I'm assuming, a World Cup of Hockey that tied to the National Hockey League, um, which will, I'm assuming, bring it more revenue as well. So, all of this to say, I think the salary cap's going to be going up, and in four years, $10.5 million player is not going to be the same as a $10.5 million player is right. Meow. Yeah. 
So that's that. And like you said in there, Dylan, like this this fan base just needed a win. And it's like that trade was that, and now you've just put the exclamation point on it. So, no, I'm not saying that you need to sign players for $10 million just for the vibes, but the, this fan base needed, to, needed some good vibes, and they got the good vibes on this one. So, jokes to Ryan Leslie, who probably definitely had this before everyone, and was just like, eh, I can't be fucked. I'll just do the eyes. And, uh, oh, how did that say? Uh, I'll just do the eyes emoji. And let Sarah Valley and, and uh, Freeman deal with the notifications for the next little while. I appreciate the smoke bomb out from, uh, from, from Ryan Leslie. I can't imagine how those guys handle social media. I mean, I'm sure, like, there are some of those guys probably have people who do it for them. Um, but, like, uh, just the, the last couple of weeks or whatever. I guess months now. I made the joke about the Oilers having the same amount of wins in the uh, the Western Conference Final as the Flames did. Again, joke. People got mad at me. And for days, people were responding in that thing. And I was getting annoyed. And I don't, like, it It, it, it was something like 60,000 interactions or something like that. Like, it wasn't, in, in the grand scheme of things, not that many. Um, but I was like, Jesus, fuck, can I, can I unfollow my own thread here? Can we stop this? Um, and then I had the tweet about Gaudreau and, and being close to, closer to home and the, the driving thing. And again, fully aware that no one in his family is going to be driving from New Jersey to Columbus. I just thought it was a funny visualization of him not being close to home at all. Um, and people took it seriously. And for days, people were referencing that one as well. Someone liked it the other day. And that was annoying. As, uh, again, if you, you were liking it as an appreciation, thank you. But it's just like, I'm over this one now. I made a joke. I want it to be done. Um, and so that one got a punch. And again, I'm just like, I'm, I'm a dude who got fired from a radio station who does a podcast now and writes for Daily Hive. I, I am nobody in the grand scheme of things. And I was like, man, fuck this thing. So I can't imagine what those dudes' mentions look like on a daily basis, let alone DMs and shit like that. Yeah, get it. all the way out of that for me. <laughs> yeah, Huberto, that, that is absolutely... Jonathan Huberto is the... Um, Oh, fuck, what was uh, Amir Abdullah for the, um, it, yeah, Huberto is preseason Amir Abdullah for the Calgary Flames. <laughs> Maybe not even Amir Abdullah. He is preseason Amir Abdullah touchdown celebrations of Calgary Flames. Here's another question for everyone in the, uh, in the chat right now. And again, I greatly appreciate you. Um, how soon do we put this on? Do you wait a year? Do, 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 first night, hey, he hasn't played a game with him yet, but let's put the captain C on him. Because um, at this point, he's kind of the leader in the clubhouse, right? Like, it could be Backlund, but it would only be Backlund for a couple of years. Um, I would I would strongly consider putting the, the captain C on, on Huberto now. That, that's, that might be the next... Maybe this is just me full-on living in the moment now. Um, but, like I said, I've loved the player for a long time. I think the guy, I think he is... Um, going to be a big reason why the Flames have any success over the next long time. And now, I've never been in a locker room with him. I've never been in a locker room with any of these fellows. I mean, surely I have been. But that you, you don't get a great sense of that when you're standing around a bunch of them half naked. Uh, they are, not me. I'm in a suit. Um, and you're asking them questions about, boy, tough one tonight against the Minnesota Wild, huh? You don't really get a sense of who's a strong leader in the situation. So I don't know. Maybe he's a dick. Maybe he is just like the worst human being in the world, and his leadership style is just farting on guys. But I would assume, just from what you see of the guy, what you've heard of the guy, I would assume he could be captain material. So I would I would look at him as uh, the, the future captain of the Calgary Flames. Now that he is now my my number one overall pick in the who should be the Flames captain draft next, it'd be him, Backlund, and if you're going to keep Monahan around, maybe Monahan. All right, yes, he's captain of all of our hearts there, Big Joe. Someone who's going to be very disappointed he's missing this is Gino. He, he's tweeted at me before that he misses the Twitch streams, and now we're back. And there's no Gino to be found. I'm hurt, personally. Ooh. No, I'm not going to fight now. We're two minutes away from winning this thing. People who are just listening, I'm recording this. I'm going to put it up as a podcast later. People who are just listening to this on podcast have no idea what I'm talking about. 
and I appreciate the ball here. Look, I, I'm not saying... I'm not saying that this is any better or worse. I'm just saying, like, yeah, Gino, Gino would miss it. But uh, I appreciate all of you guys being here. Um, Deed's the captain of the, the chat so far. Big John coming up with some big ones as well. As it looks like we're going to have the, uh, the the big goal from Joel Otto be the uh, the insurance marker that we need. To th This is game four of the series, by the way. I'm about to sweep the Jets and move on to the second round. I forgot how much fun this team was. Yeah, see look at that. This is this is a strong locker room. There's no there's no controversies. Big John understands he plays a pivotal role on this team in this chat, but Deeds is Deeds is wearing the C on this one. Deeds is out there, he's speaking with the media after. Um De Deeds is out there crushing this one. Oh dang. Yeah. And then we got Dylan also, who is the, um, he's like the, the strong, silent type coming in here. Just like he said a couple of words, didn't say a ton, but it was impactful what he did say. And we will remember it always. Oh god, I'm about to blow this lead, aren't I? Oh, crap. Oh boy, that was, uh, that was a little tense. It's still uh, not, not tense here. <laughs> yeah, I'm, um, I'm the longtime equipment manager who talks to all the boys about, hey, you remember how great it was when we could sneak in here? Um, that's, uh, that, that's me, yeah. Dylan is our, our geo there. Hey, look at that, I beat the Jets. Take that one, effect. Oh my god, that hair on Lanny. Yeah, get him the fuck out. Yeah, Mike Vernon, there we go. I'm gonna have to get this season over with so we can get the two guys out of here who we both need to get out of here. <laughs> uh, Alright, well, this has been fun. To summarize, Jonathan Gaud uh, Jonathan Gaudreau, Jesus. Jonathan Huberto signing with the Calgary Flames on a long-term contract is a very good thing, and Calgary Flames fans should feel good about it. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. I can't promise when I will do this again. I want to do it soon, because this was fun as fuck. Um, if you missed any parts of this, it's going to be up um, all on here as a, a video that you can watch after, and also on my podcast, Couch Potato Diary, that you can find several times a week, wherever you find fine podcasts. So uh, thank you to anyone for... Uh, thank you to everyone for tuning in, and I will talk to everyone later. Good night. Oh, I have to hit the thing that ends it. That's my bad. Just wait. Just wait. Wait for it. Wait for it. There we go.